Well, all right, everybody. I never thought I'd be saying this, because oftentimes when I cover his political takes, or his takes on anything that are adjacent to politics, they tend to be, like, at best very fence-sittery, and at worst, like, chud-tier, right? Like, the, the anti-woke chud-tier shit. Or at least comes off more as influenced by people who are like that, if that makes sense. So, the act man... Not a bad guy. I don't think he's even, like, right-wing or anything. I think that he just has weird politics. But at the end of the day, he does still seem like a good and a normal person. And fundamentally, I think those traits limit how weird and bad his takes can be at the end of the day. Because I've been getting recommended a video by him uh, from my own audience suggesting that I cover it on stream because supposedly he's pretty based here. This came out about a month ago and has over a million views. It's called It's Over for Dr. Disrespect. Apparently it's him going over Dr. Disrespect's uh, attempt to come back from, you know, getting outed as having inappropriately texted minors, um, as well as dunking on the conservatives that are defending him. I've not seen this video at all, so I'm very interested in watching What's it. You guys have been recommending it, so... Let's go ahead and give it a look. Now, since we agree with this video, I'm going to go ahead and link it in the comments here. Or not in the comments, in the chat here. And if my editor remembers to, it should also be in the description. Um, so, yeah. Here is a link to the original video if you guys want to go send some support. And in the meantime, we're going to watch this video. It's over for Dr. Disrespect. We probably won't watch the whole thing because, you know, there's probably not going to be much to, like, disagree with in it. Um, but let's let's see what he had to say about this because I'm curious. Actman is a big YouTuber, okay? If he's if he's expressing a good take, that is a good thing. Oh my God, we're muted. What the fuck? All right, now we're good. What's up, everybody? This is the Actman here, and today is a crazy day. It's been a wild week. If you haven't heard, popular Twitch streamer Doctor Disrespect was under fire for some very serious allegations. This all stems from his mysterious permaban on Twitch back on June 26, 2020. It is a mystery that has confused and perplexed the masses for four years. I hope people, like, keep in mind, by the way, that it, Dr. Disrespect has made so much money and has so much stuff already post-making all that money, um, like, like, or before making even more money, that, like, unless he's literally a gambling addict spending all of his money on drugs and travel, like, like at an insane rate. Um, Dr. Disrespect could have his career completely evaporated. Thanos snapped in an instant and wake up tomorrow to no social medias existing at all or any new income, and he would still be able to retire a multi-multi-millionaire. Like, he's, he's big. He's a big guy, and he had years and years and years of immense success before getting exposed. And, uh, unfortunately, he could be, like, chased off the internet forever, and he would still retire a v with a very comfortable, happy life. Which is one of the biggest, like, tragedies of when, like, karma finally does catch up to these large public figures who are so awful, is unless they get, like, revealed as being, like, an awful criminal or something... They usually get to run away with like millions in cash, right? Like they get they get a golden parachute, and you know there's no real karma at the end of the day. And at last, we finally have truth. We know why Doctor Disrespect was permanently banned from Twitch, and the reason ain't good. It is basically all but been proven. Now I'm predominantly a gaming YouTuber, but I think sometimes it's important to come out and talk about serious issues that pertain to YouTube, Twitch, content creators, you know, the sphere I work in, the sphere of gaming and content creation and what content creators do, what kind of an example they- I mean, this is the same logic as to why I think that, you know, even normie content creators should occasionally talk politics and like educate themselves on relevant political issues to anything they're talking about and try to have like a well-reasoned, unbiased take. Um, I, I, it's why, like, content creators like the Actman avoid politics, and in doing so, they tend to gravitate towards, like, the conservative side of politics on accident, because a big part of, like, conservatism is, you know, are fighting against progress, fighting against those that are suggesting you should act to make things better. Um, and so that tends to, if you want to be, like, the centrist fence-sitter who doesn't want to get involved or, or get political, you're going to find yourself 
more amiable to conservatives than to the left by default. And that's why I think a lot of people have for so long associated the act man with conservative politics when he's really just kind of a normie. They said the reason surrounding Dr. Disrespect's ban has basically been like the D.B. Cooper of content creator perma bans. You know, nobody could say for sure what happened. There were so many theories. Was I like that reference did about his mixer contract that he tried to leverage that to get a better deal with Twitch. They found out they booted him. Was somebody at Twitch just not liking him? Did it have something to do with the bathroom incident or was it something much more sinister? Nobody could really say. Everyone knew it was something really bad. Like, go back to anybody's speculation when this came out. Everyone knew it had to be something bad. The fact that no one knew and no one was leaking meant that a very small circle knew why. And that circle was keeping quiet. Everyone knew, who was at least involved in the realm of streaming and knows how this stuff works, that with how much money was on the table for Twitch the contract that had just gone through, something had come up out of nowhere, was kept to a very small circle of people, and it was bad. I think a lot of people might have theorized at the time that he did something with a kid. I think a lot of people expected it, um, or I think they expected something as bad, because something this bad is the only thing that could possibly justify Twitch's actions on one uh, on one hand and then the secrecy on another as well. Um, I think everyone predicted it had to be something at least this bad or, or, or close to this bad. Like, like it was something bad he did. Um, and I think most people agreed on that before this came out. Say for sure. Of course we knew that there were people behind the scenes that knew the reason why, but the public didn't know. So for four years, there's basically been like mass confusion about it. And so many theories had good explanations for them that it kind of just became a guessing game. Like you, like you just kind of picked your favorite theory. But while there was some initial yep. skepticism around the initial accusation, at this point, Dr. Disrespect has put out an official statement and removed all doubt. Keep in mind, he's responding to an allegation that he sexted a minor using the Twitch Whispers app back in 2017 and had plans to meet up with this minor at TwitchCon. We'll talk about why that's the stupidest fucking thing in the world. So let's do a little experiment. Let's see how many times Doc says something similar to what somebody who would get caught on to catch a predator would say in that situation. What are you doing? Stupid fucking mistakes, man. Making a mistake. So here it is. This is the reason why Dr. Disrespect was banned from Twitch. The Twitch ban. Hello, I'd like to make a quick statement. Let's cut the fucking bullshit as you know there's no filter with me. I've always been upfront and real with you guys on anything that I can be upfront about. And I'm always willing to accept responsibility, which is why I'm here now. It's really not a good time to be putting on the whole tough guy persona. Like, I don't give a fuck what you guys think. It's so weird, too. Like, because this guy... Isn't it crazy that he managed to top being famous for cheating on his wife? Because that's what he was famous for before, outside of his bubble, was cheating on his wife. He was the two-time, the two of wives. Um, and so that was what he was famous for, and he somehow outdone it. Genuinely wild. He did the one thing, the one thing that could outdo cheating on his wife in, like, re like smearing his own reputation. <laughs> Think? Let me tell you how it really is. Let me tell you how I whizzed up a minor. What? You gotta take this a little bit more seriously, my guy. First and foremost, I do want to apologize to everyone in my community, as well as those close to me, my team, and everyone at Midnight Society Game Studios. Now, Midnight Society was the studio Dr. Disrespect basically founded, and their game Dead Drop, which he's been promoting heavily over the last couple years. It's not a good sign that he wants to apologize to everyone in his community, first and foremost. Like, addressing the fans. You should be addressing everybody. You should maybe be apologizing to the victim it sets a weird vibe when you're like first addressing the people in your community like apologizing to them but not specifying why so he goes on a lot of people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with midnight society and i and we made the painful decision collectively to have me step down our team is full of incredibly talented and good people that have high career ambitions and families and i'd never want to jeopardize the culture we have carefully crafted oh he's such a good guy you're looking out for the boys and the uh, homies at midnight society what a fantastic chap the problem with this statement is we made the decision collectively to have me step down now robert bowling you may have heard his name before but he used to work on call of duty and he's the studio head of midnight society and he partnered with dr disrespect right this yeah, is what he had to say this statement is for me personally. It does not reflect any of my companies and has not gone through any legal or PR approvals. If you inappropriately message a minor, I cannot work with you, period. I promised to act only on facts and I did. So Midnight Society put out this statement like the company's Damn. Twitter account. 
On Friday evening, we became aware of an allegation against Dr. Disrespect, Guy Beam. We assumed his innocence and began speaking with the parties involved, and in order to maintain our principles and standards as a studio, we needed to act. For this reason, we are terminating our relationship with Guy Beam. We are. The company is terminating their relationship with Dr. Disrespect, not a collective decision between yep. the two. While these facts are difficult to hear and even more difficult to accept, it is our duty to act with dignity on behalf of all individuals involved, especially the 55 developers and families we have employed along with our community of players. One could have interpreted this as like a business decision. You know, you drop the person, the celebrity, who's currently in a PR disaster, who's, who's a detriment to the company, you know? Someone like Johnny Depp lost movie roles because of the allegations against him. Knowing what we know now, it's not like that at all. But it's easy for people to think that when it doesn't directly state that they looked at evidence or not. Of course, none of this matters now because we know the truth. But let's get back to Doc's statement. Everyone has been wanting to know why I was banned from Twitch, but for reasons outside of my control, I was not allowed to say anything for the last several years. Now that two former- Oh, by the way, guys, if you want to get like an idea of how like bullshit the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial stuff was. Um, and I, I know for a fact Ackman's take on that whole thing is cringe. Um, have you ever noticed that uh, the way that people talked about the big trial that happened a couple years ago, they talk about it like Johnny Depp was fighting for his life to prove his innocence? A lot of people seem to forget that was Johnny Depp suing Amber Heard in the UK for defamation for talking about the allegations she has against John, for making the allegations. Um, he sued her in a place that has less freedom of speech, so he'd have a higher chance of winning. Um, like, literally found a place where they, he would have a lower standard to prove in order to win. And it was literally just him trying to do a media, like, like a media spectacle case to try and make the world see him as innocent. And as a victim instead, right? Um, it was genuinely one of the weirdest times in, in I've ever seen on the internet. It's very clear that Johnny Depp and Amber Heard were both abusive to each other. But uh, god damn, was Johnny Depp the Darvo King through all of that shit. Yeah, Johnny Depp never lost any roles either. He al Also, he first sued in the UK, lost, then sued in the US, and then in the UK again, Balth. Um, the recent one that he won, I believe, was was the UK, the second UK defamation case. Um, yeah, and I think he got all of his movie roles back too. So just 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 throwing that out there, just just throwing that in there for anyone who doesn't know. Twitch employees have publicly disclosed the accusations. I can tell you my side of the story regarding the ban. And here's the smoking gun. Were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. <laughs> He edited that post, by the way, and removed minor from the post for some reason, like as if he accidentally typed it there, I guess, um, and replaced it and made it say messages within an individual back in 2017. Um, but you can see edits on Twitter, like you can see like what something was before it was edited. So people saw that it said minor and then he edited it back to saying minor again because people were calling him out for hiding it. So bizarre, dude. Like, what was he doing there? I I don't. What what was his thought process there? Like, I I I could die happy knowing what he was. What what I would die happy just to be a fly on the wall, in the room when he made this post, just to know how like what went down and what the deal was there. Like, even if I don't know the story behind anything else, that post. I want to know the story behind that post and the editing, of minor out of it and then back into it. Like, what? happened there. Were there real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. Now, there's something very important to keep in mind. This is Dr. Disrespect's version of events. This is what really happened in the best case scenario. In the best case scenario, he was texting a minor and it was inappropriate at times. What do you think actually took place? If if this is the best version of events that we are being told, it's like I don't want I don't want to know anymore. Honestly, I don't need to know anymore at this point. Were there real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not, guys. I, I just came here to check in on this person. I just wanted to make sure they're okay. You know, I just wanted to be a mentor. You know, I had no intentions. Why did I come? You know, all this way? No reason. These were casual, mutual conversations that sometimes lean too much in the direction of being inappropriate but nothing more. Dude, you're talking to a minor. You can't say that stuff mutually or consent. Obviously his take on Dr. Disrespect is really good, but the part that people really wanted me to see were the people defending him. Um, 
Let's see. Where is it? I assume it, it's like around here, maybe? Things up on YouTube. You had seven years after what you did to enjoy life, to make a whole bunch of money, to make a bunch of connections and go to all sorts of events and to be somebody that people looked up to, that people aspired to be like. When you walk down the street, somebody would want a picture with you. And now what are you? Fuck off. You guys have always showed People me and my away. family love and support throughout Their all these years. We love you guys like you can't imagine. I have the best fucking community and circle. If any of this has made you uncomfortable, I get it. You don't have to support me anymore, but just know you have always been greatly appreciated. Thanks for the money, dipshits. Seven years of support, man. And that's that's something that maybe not a lot of people are talking about because they're focusing on what he did, which is awful, and how it affected the victim, which is totally fair. Of course you want to focus on that. And hopefully the victim or victims are living their best life. Ideally, they this will never enter their brain ever again. That's probably not the case, but you know, you just you just wish the best for for those people. And if you're a fan that supported Doc for a long time and you stood by him through thick and thin, through all of the controversies he's been in, man, that's gotta feel like shit to see this now. That sucks. And I've never been the biggest fan of Doctor Disrespect, but I I found him entertaining when I would watch him. You know, nobody wants to believe that somebody this influential with millions of followers and dedicated fans, somebody who's entertaining and who's got a unique character and style. I don't think anybody truly wanted to believe that Dr. Disrespect was guilty. Some people jumped the gun, but you know, some people already didn't like him. So, you know, they were going to believe whatever negative thing was said about him anyways. But, you know, it, it's not something to celebrate. You know what I mean? This is like, this is an awful thing that happened. And somebody that the gaming community has put on a pedestal never should have been put up there. It's tragic. But trust me when I say this to all my haters, that live and breathe social media with zero real life experience. I don't give a fuck about you. Haters gonna hate. What can you do? Are you serious? Finally, if you're uncomfortable with this entire statement and think I'm a piece of shit, that's fine, but I'm not fucking going anywhere. I'm not the same guy that made this mistake all those years ago. I'm taking an extended vacation with my family, as mentioned on stream, and I'm coming back with a heavy weight off my shoulders. They want me to disappear. Yeah, fucking right. And that's it. That's Doc's official statement. That is the best case situation for what really happened. And it's terrible. It, it sounds like none of this was sent through a lawyer, which it should have been. One glaring omission is, I didn't know the person's age at the time, and when I learned, I immediately stopped messaging them and told them, this isn't cool, you know? But that's missing. That's that's the most crucial thing, because you knew. You knew this whole time. What's like really sad and pathetic about this, though, is, is that he's talking like he can come back. I'd like to be able to just go back to work. Just go back to work. Oh, he can. He totally can. Like, let's not pretend like this is going to end Dr. Disrespect's career. Let's not pretend like it's the end of his career. Um, the internet is... The, the anti-cancel culture movement achieved exactly what it intended to achieve. There is effectively no accountability online anymore unless you are literally willing to dox somebody and, like, find, like, like ruin their real life um, and get them, like, banned and, like, go full life ruination. Outside of that... Getting canceled and, like, having a controversy and, and backlash being some form of accountability, um, it's not a thing anymore. The anti, like, cancel culture stuff has primed people to be so skeptical of any allegation or any, like, wrongdoing from a, like, favorite of theirs that, like, anybody can get away with it now. Like, there was a time where it feels like if someone got outed for something like this, they were fucked, right? But God, it doesn't seem like that anymore, right? Like, it feels rare that someone with a massive audience getting outed for something like this actually crashes and burns them. Because people have be like will continue, out of spite, supporting a creator who's gotten outed for, like, pedophilia. I mean, look at Sneeko, right? Look at um, fucking Keemstar and, and these figures that have been, like, long time exposed countless times for horrible shit. Um... Like, people like Colleen Ballinger and Illuminati, they let the hate that they were getting, and validly so, like, they deserved the hate, they let it get to them. But if they had just continued chugging, they would have been fine. Whether the drama that you get into is, is like, valid or invalid, if you keep chugging, especially nowadays, you'll be fine. Right? And, you know, for better or for worse. And in this case, it's for worse. Because there's so many people who really need it, like, their careers to have just been nuked and ended. People like Sneeko. How the fuck is Sneeko still around if we don't have a, a genuinely brain-rotted 
anti-cancel culture culture online now where people will spitefully continue to support awful people just so that cancel culture doesn't win i'm not saying what i've what I done is right because i know it's wrong so we're all square you can see even you no, just get no, up and walk no. out of here. like uh, three months from now or whatever he's just gonna be able to hop back on youtube play some warzone and you know maybe he'll get some flack but you know the true fans will still be there and the haters will just be you know saying all this shit. they have zero life experience whatever the fuck that means the thing that was so hard for me to believe Dude, I think, I think he's not given enough credit to the online right as well. Like, the, the online right talks a lot about how they don't like the groomer gays and stuff like that. But when it comes to an actual case of a situation like this, like the whole Sneeko defending child marriage thing with uh, Critical, like, people will freak out a hundred times over if they hear that a YouTuber supports kids medically transitioning with the consent of like parents and doctors and the guidance and, and whatnot of parents and doctors and psychologists and the medical and scientific consensus on the issue. And that scene is more problematic than Sneeko literally fighting for and believing in the moral superiority of child marriage. Like fathers marrying off their underage daughters to grown men. Um, it, it's just like the, the internet yeah, how did Sneeko survive admitting that he likes getting cucked? Or how did Aiden Ross survive sniffing the shit out of Andrew Tate's chair on camera? Like, come on, man. Leave. That Doc could be guilty is that it was through Twitch whispers. I thought... If, if you... If Dr. Disrespect comes back and builds a career, and, and his career just resumes mostly as normal, and he's still around, and you're like, how the fuck did he recover from this? He got out of his texting, he was sexting minors. Um, you can thank the derangement against cancel culture that, like, started up in 2019 and blew up uh, going into, like, 2020 to, like, 2022, um, where everybody started fighting against online accountability, um because for the, for the sake of it how did aiden ross not get murdered by andrew tate when he visited him after prison <laughs> real uh, there, there's no fucking way anybody could possibly oh, yeah. be that edp 445 is back by the way the the like pedophile guy cupcake all that yeah he's back he's back he somehow is not dead from like kidney failure or whatever and is back um like can like the anti-cancel culture cultural movement online was a cancer stupid that they would do something like that on main on their verified twitch account through twitch whispers it just seemed like so brazen and that there were plans to meet up at twitchcon the place that dr disrespect would be more recognized than anywhere else on the planet you know it's like how does someone come up with that plan dr disrespect doesn't exactly blend in with the crowd you know he stands out at six foot eight how did you plan on getting away with this when you're taller than 99.9% .9 of the population? Your verified Twitch account and you were going to meet up at TwitchCon. I, I couldn't imagine you being that stupid, but I guess you are. Stupidity. Stupidity. Honestly. And so now, you know, his, his former friends like Tim the Tapman and Nick Merckx have posted statements and both of them are just, they don't even say yep. the word friend. They say, we played a lot of games with him. We played a lot of games with that guy. Who remembers all the videos of them saying, everyone's good jumping on my boy, Dr. Disrespect, these woke SJW blue hair feminist, they, them pronouns and bio jumping on my boy, Dr. Disrespect. He's so cool. You, these woke people, they just can't handle how cool. And then he like Dr. Disrespect gets out of his. Uh, so yeah, me and Dr. Disrespect, you know, we, we weren't really friends, but we, you know, we played games together. And I just got to say, I do not stand I do not stand by what he did. You know, just a reminder, me and him were never really that close, you know, and, like scrambling to delete all their videos defending him. A anyone who remembers this, the, you you were on Twitter at the time, you remember this. Like, they, they immediately 180'd on that shit fast. And we're like, oh, yeah, me and Dr. Disrespect, yeah, we're never that cool. We're never, we're never that close. So they're already trying to distance themselves from it. Ninja yep. also made a statement. You know, everybody's talking about this because it's just the biggest debacle for a, a gaming content creator in a long, long time. You know, here's the thing. Here's This is the only thing that matters is that Doc acknowledges that the conversations got inappropriate at times. He tries to use subtle language, not so subtle actually, but specific language to try and downplay the severity of the event. And again, that's something that all the predators would try to use on to catch a predator. We all see through that shit. That's all that matters is that you did text a minor inappropriate things. And it's 
you just don't do that. <laughs> it's like, it, it, it's not hard to be a good person. It's not hard to be a good role model when you're a content creator, when you have everything. That's the thing. It's like Doc had everything, multi-million dollar deals, brand deals, you know, a wife, a child, lots of friends, a great community, a fun, energetic style of live streaming. He, he had a niche that nobody else filled. He had everything. You had it made and you threw it away for the stupidest shit ever. And there's no coming back from that, you know? It won't be Dr. Disrespect streaming because Dr. Disrespect died the moment he posted that tweet. Guy Beam is gonna be the one streaming and we don't want him. Nobody wants him. Anybody who has seen all this stuff and is still like, well, I need to see DMs. You know, I need more evidence. I need to see an official statement from Twitch. It's like, we don't, we don't need to see that. It's bad enough as it is and- I wonder if this is going to be part of a countercultural shift for the internet. Um, I wonder if these content creators and large public figures are going to realize that the um, anti-cancel culture hysteria overcorrected, right? Like, I, I wonder if they're going to realize they overcorrected real hard by being so anti-cancel culture that we're now at the point where the default assumed innocent till proven guilty position of people online has been gotten way too it's gone way too far right like when this when we're this far into essentially full confirmation that this is real and people still need more evidence because innocent till proven guilty they don't want to do canceling they don't want to cancel they don't want to be part of cancel culture it, they've overcorrected they have well and truly overcorrected and I wonder if people like the Act Man, who seems, I feel like the Act Man is a great representative of your average gamer normie who isn't particularly right or left wing. Um, I think that when people like that, normies and, and middle of the road people, are starting to recognize that there's been a massive overcorrection and that maybe the cancel culture stuff was, maybe it served a purpose. Maybe, maybe it had its uses. I'm wondering if we're going to see a real push in the opposite direction, like less of the is my is my light dying? I think one of my yeah, that's that's flickering for sure. Oh no. I love these lights. To be fair, they've been they've been dying out. Like the bulb in that one's broken as well. Let me turn them off and see if turning them back on. Uh, well, at least you still got that one. I need to replace both those lights. I've had them for a while anyway, and they've they've definitely bit, made their money's worth so far in the time that I've had them. So I just need to buy a couple of new ones and uh, it will be all good. The more we see, it's only going to get worse. Like it, it's not going to get better from here on out. So, you know, this is this has just been such a crazy last few days. I don't think in my wildest dreams I would have expected this to be the reason Dr. Disrespect was banned from Twitch. The most like I said, man, I'm real. I'm really wondering if if this obvious overcorrection and in Internet culture against the, the cancel culture stuff, I wonder I wonder if we're going to see a re-correction back towards a favorability towards accountability when a content creator or a public figure does something bad. Like, maybe it is good if they get some backlash, you know? Maybe it is good that to an extent, some, like, we kind of do consider the possibility of guilt in the court of public opinion more than the court of law would. There's a reason why there's the court of public opinion and the court of law. The court of law should always assume innocence before proven guilty, obviously. But in the court of public opinion, I don't think we need to apply the same rig the same rigorous standards. I think that when something is obvious, we can call it out as such. We don't need to pretend like we're detectives or, or whatever. I, I think we can recognize this is a bad guy and that he should probably lose his career for texting minors inappropriately. Um, someone like that cannot be trusted with a platform in power. And maybe people will even turn around on their positions of deplatforming, because a lot of these guys are super anti-deplatforming. But hey, if YouTube and Twitch aren't doing anything and a guy who is a danger to children is continuing to exist on these platforms, maybe deplatforming is a more reasonable option to them now. Maybe it's not this crazy nuclear option that only woke people suggest. Maybe, 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 we'll see. 
Anyway, if you enjoyed this segment, please consider leaving a like. Every thumbs up, no matter when, where, or what you're watching, really goes a long way to help the channel, so I super duper appreciate it. Subscribe ring the bell icon to see more from me and also help the channel further, and comment down below as well. It boosts myself in the algorithm a ton, and I appreciate every single one of you who does that. The engagement is big. Thank you, guys. And of course, consider following my social medias, linked down below in the description if you want to see more from me, including joining my fan discord, which is the free main hub of my community. I host events in there, including game events, call in streams, and watch parties, and I announce all my new uploads and streams there as well. So if you don't want to miss anything, make sure you join my fan discord. I do hope to see you there. And of course, if you want to support me directly, financially, it always helps a lot, and I really appreciate it. If you donate, subscribe, or gift a sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live or support me through youtube twitch streamlabs stream elements patreon or by supporting me through the uh stream or buying merch the stream labs link down below as well but regardless of how you support me even if you're just lurking around thank you so much for watching and have a good one <laughs>